WFRV TV Local 5, your local election headquarters. This is Newsmaker Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmaker Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. This week, we welcome a special lady to Northeast Wisconsin. Sister Mary Jo Soviak is a teacher from Marion Catholic High School in Chicago Heights, Illinois. Last summer, Sister Mary Jo became a social media sensation after throwing out the first pitch at a Chicago White Sox game. Then she was nominated for an ESPY Award for Best Viral Sports Moment. And Sister Mary Jo is featured on a 2019 Topps baseball card. And Sister Mary Jo Sobiek joins us this morning on Newsmaker Sunday. What a thrill for all of us here today. Thanks, Tom. What Thanks for having thrill. me here. Take me back to that day to the White Sox, White Sox Invitation. How did that come about? Uh, it was Marian Catholic Night at Guaranteed Rate Field. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our school planned an outing to the, to the park to kind of kick off the new school year. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a year ago uh, this Sunday when that happened. Um, it's the 60th anniversary of Marian Catholic High School. The Dominican Sisters of Springfield in Illinois opened the school mm -hmm. in 1958. And there are four sisters still ministering at the school. And so um, being an athlete uh, in my day, I, I grew up the youngest of 10. I, I'm very active uh, with, my, with my family and, and school. I played sports through elementary school, high school, and college. And so uh, administration knew uh, I had a knack for throwing a baseball, and so they invited me to make the pitch. So you get out onto the field, and as I understand it, the, the baseball team, the players, they see this meek little nun, and they ask you if you would like to come closer to mm -hmm. home plate so mm -hmm. you could throw mm -hmm. it. And you said no. Well, I, I actually asked them. I think they assumed that I would throw it from the grass because a lot of people do. Yeah. But I said, do I have to throw it from the grass or can I throw it from the mound? And they said, oh, by all means, sister, you can do whatever you want. So I said, well, I'm going to throw from the oh, rubber. Oh, look. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you uh -huh. nailed it. You nailed it. Well, with the help of the grace of God. Sure, I did. did yeah. You, did you practice? I did. The Marian Catholic baseball field is right outside the convent. So I was there the, the night before throwing, and I was throwing in the gym with the baseball players, and, and they helped me. Yeah. It's been a long time. I mean, yeah. I've played softball, shortstop, and center fielder in, yeah. in high school and college, but it's been a while. I'm 50 years old, so, but I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. So you've got the nickname Sister Strike. I, yes. As, the, as a result of all of this, this which proves by the, the bicep thing, it mm -hmm. proves you were mm -hmm. an athlete at one well, time. Well, you have to have a little moxie, Tom, right? right? I mean, right. don't you have to have a little bit of a bravado to even be on the air, right? So you when do. you do something like that, sure. Um, when did you realize that, that the pitch and the bicep and the whole thing went viral? You know, it was a couple hours afterwards. Uh, when we got up to the concourse level after I threw the pitch, there were two others who threw a pitch also. And so when we got off the field and, um, you know, the people who work for, for the White Sox, they take you back into the concourse and everywhere else, people started, you know, wanting pictures and, and things like that. And a lot of the alums, I've been at Marion for 12 years. I'm entering my 13th year. So there were a lot of families there that I knew, and they were being very affirming to me. And so we were making pictures with, with people on their cell phones and all that. And uh, Dan Kozlowski, the vice president of advancement for Marion, who asked me to throw the pitch, was with, with me. And I think he had an inkling that if I threw a pitch, it was going to go viral. I didn't even know how that worked. I do now. Mm -hmm. And so um, by, I'd say, an hour and a half, two hours later, he kept checking his phone. And he saw I was on CBS Sports. I had made ESPN Sports Center Top Ten. He said, you went viral. So, so you got put up for an ESPY award for all mm -hmm. of this. What yeah. was that like going to Hollywood? Um, you know, I've, I've been asked, when I went out to Fox & Friends in New York, Janice Dean asked me how I felt about my newfound fame. And I said to her that I've always felt famous. <laughs> you know, and, and that's a credit to my family and to the neighborhood I grew up in. There was just always a rich sense of community where we were always affirming. Every place I've ever went to teach, Duluth, Minnesota, now I'm at, I was in Aurora, Illinois, now I'm at Marion Catholic High School in Chicago Heights. It's just, the families just embrace you. They take you in. And so I've always felt, um, I don't know, just really engaged with the people that I'm with. And so to have the opportunity to go to Hollywood, um, I just wanted to take in the environment, the atmosphere, just to really appreciate everything as blessing and gift. And it was, it was a neat, profound experience. It was really nice. 
after the pitch, after the viral video. What was it like when you went back to school? What was the reception like? Um, actually, before I left for the ESPYs, the school community gave me a send-off. That was fantastic. And we even had a police escort out to, to 294 to, to head to O'Hare Airport. So it was all really fun. When I got back to school, actually, it's the summertime. But um, this kicked off the, the school year. So when I got back to school, the kids were just kind of, they were taking it all in, too. I've been at Marion for 12 years. And so a lot of them know my reputation around school and, and as an athlete. And I go to their games, and I, I give them advice. And so... Uh, they were proud of me. We all just celebrated together as a school community and really let it be a, a spirited thing throughout the year. I mean, Marion Catholic is filled with all kinds of, I'm not the only quote-unquote celebrity. I mean, our band is fantastic. We have wonderful academics, um, our, our the theater and speech program. I mean, so there's a lot to um, applaud at Marion Catholic. And so to kick off the school year with this was just kind of pointed the way for what the rest of the year was going to be like for us. And you have said this newfound fame has given you the opportunity. It opened the door to talk about God some more. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, what I said that night was just, I was on Good Morning America on, on Sunday. So the pitch happened on Saturday. Monday morning, I did Good Morning right America. Away. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just do your best and let God do the rest. I mean, that's all I did. I, I, I knew that God had blessed me. My, my natural gift and talent from when I was a kid is my athletic ability. And so a lot of my relationships and the way I live my religious life comes out of that sense of perseverance and resilience and doing my best and contributing to the team, knowing my role. That's what religious life is. It's a team. And so everything that we do in life, in, our, in the human family, we're part of a larger team. And so if we can work together and just do our part, do it the best we can, God will do the rest. It might not be how we planned it, but it ends up being for our good. And so for, for me to have that opportunity to, to point it back to something bigger, this I did not do this on my own. I mean, God directed that pitch into Lucas Giolito's glove. I can guarantee you that. So um, uh, it, it's all been blessing, Tom. It really has. It's been great. And you're part of a big team from home, one of ten kids. Yes, uh, What was the, the youngest. reaction from, from the youngest, from brothers and sisters? How have they reacted? Well, they, they thought it was great. Right. I mean, you know, they, of course, I'm the youngest, and, and they want to let me know, you know, don't forget where you came from. You're still the little sister, you know, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, my mom loved baseball. My father died when I was uh, 11, and my mother died seven years ago, and she was an avid baseball fan. Her name was Louise, and my sister said to me, before I threw the pitch, she said, Mary Jo, mom would love this. She's going to be your angel in the outfield. And lo and behold, Tom, that night, one of the people who wanted a picture with me in the outfield was a little girl who was 10 years old, and her name was Louise. And you can't tell me that that wasn't a profound right. meaning for that. And so that really brought everything kind of full circle for me, and it, it, it's, been, it's been great. They're loving it. They enjoy it. Um, I was invited back to my high school. Uh, for the homecoming game to throw out the first pass oh of the football game. And so um, all my brothers and sisters uh, were there on the field with me to be my team. And so they were the O-line, and I was the quarterback, and it was great. It was oh, a lot of fun. that is great. Yeah. You have ties to Northeast Wisconsin. Uh, on a more serious note here, sure. um, Ted Hokanson has ALS. Mm -hmm. That's your mm -hmm. cousin. Right. And... Uh, and in the interest of transparency, folks, we're taping this show on Friday, August 16th. And on this night, you, sister, are going to be throwing out the first pitch at the Timber Rattlers game. Yes. How, how important is that for you to call attention to ALS and, and, and to Ted? Well, and I, for me, finding out just two days ago that it is the 75th anniversary of Lou Gehrig's speech when he retired from baseball because of the disease he had that no one knew about, which since has been called ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. And this is the 75th anniversary this year of him retiring because of that. And he, if you listen to his speech, he talks about how grateful he is. This is the speech where he says, I am the luckiest man in the world. Exactly. Yeah. And I believe that Ted Hokanson embodies that every day. And I'm proud to be his cousin and pseudo sister, I would say, um, not just religious sister, but uh, sister, blood sister. But 
he 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 witnesses to that kind of resilience and gratefulness mm -hmm. and joy you know it it and so for me you know i know i'm a uh, i'm an ambassador of christ you know as a religious sister uh for my religious community the dominican sisters of springfield for marion catholic high school um but this this night i'm an ambassador for our whole family who comes to just embrace ted and to let him know that he's not alone in this. A lot of us, you know, my aunt and uncle moved from Sock Rapids, Minnesota, the day I was born, November 21st, 1968. So I never grew up with them. They would come back on the 4th of July for the reunion we had on my mom's side of the family. My mom was number eight, Ted's dad was number 11 of 11. And so they would come back and we always look forward to the 4th of July reunion with the Hokinsons. And that's when we got to see them and hang out with them. And then they would leave and we wouldn't see them for like another year. And so for us, they've never been apart from us. It's just harder to be together. So tonight, I'm bringing the whole family with me. And it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I'm so, I've been blessed to receive this invitation to be here. It's great. All right. We have been talking about Ted. We're going to meet Ted right after this break. Ted and wife Jackie. So stay with us. <laughs> 